Welcome back to Module 5. We're starting off with the idea of absolute values. And I want to look at actually evaluating absolute values in the more simple way. Later on, we'll look at evaluating absolute value equations when there's an equal sign. But I just want to show you what you even do with an absolute value. Because, again, we've got these bars. Remember, that is our absolute value. Well, as we said in the intro video, the main idea is that whatever is in there becomes positive. So if I have this example, my minus 5 within absolute value bars, it just is equal to 5. And when I said later we'd look at ones with equal signs, that's when you have an equal sign from the beginning. And you'll see what I mean later. Now, we could also look at something like absolute values of minus 4 plus 7. You have to evaluate what's in here first. So in this case, what we might get is so minus 4 plus 7, or 3. And then, as always, whatever's in there has to be positive. In this case, it already is. Great. So that would just be equal to 3. OK. What if we had something like cos of 180 degrees? Absolute value of that. Well, we have to evaluate this first. You have to know what this is, and in this case, and you know what, I'm going to put some lines in between things just to differentiate the questions we've been doing. This cos of 180, we'd go to our calculator, punch it in, and we'd find that that's equal to minus 1. Well, absolute value of minus 1 is just 1. That's why it's so important to evaluate it first. We wouldn't just want to say it's, oh, the positive value of cos of 180. No, no, we have to know what cos of 180 is first. Great. Well, I mean, this can get more complicated. We can have uh, multiple absolute values. In fact, let's take one quick look at that. I'm going to switch colors for a second. We could have absolute value of 4 minus the absolute value of minus 8, all divided by the absolute value of minus 2. You can have multiple absolute values. It doesn't matter. You evaluate what's in each of them first. So this, absolute value of 4, well, is just 4. Absolute value of minus 8 is 8. We still have the minus in between, because that's not within any absolute value bars. So we have 4 minus 8, all over the absolute value of minus 2, which is simply 2. So 4 minus 8, we get minus 4 divided by 2. Or finally, minus 2 is our overall answer. So it's just because we had absolute value bars doesn't guarantee our final answer is going to be positive. It just means what's ever in the absolute value would be positive. If I wanted to, I could have put absolute values around this entire thing, and then I would make this into a positive. But what if I had the absolute value of minus x? Thing is, most people are going to be tempted to put x. Whatever's in the absolute value bar becomes positive. The problem is we don't know what x is. You couldn't evaluate this. You'd leave it as it is because, great, maybe I evaluate this and say it's x. But what if it turns out that x was actually negative 7? We'd end up with a negative answer. And in this case, that negative would have been within an absolute value, so it wouldn't have been okay. We, if we knew it was negative 7, the negatives would become positive 7, and we get a 7 as our answer. So if you don't know anything about this x, can't do it. However, if I told you to assume x was a positive integer, then we could evaluate this. Because we know, well, in that case, we could write this as x, because x is what we've been told by anyway. That what we've been told is that x is positive. So we'd be okay in that case. That would allow us to evaluate this. Otherwise, no. So even if you had something like um, 3y minus 2y minus z, you could simplify it down. You could rewrite this as y, because 3 minus 2 is simply 1, or y, minus z. But since we don't know anything about y or z, we can't evaluate this. So you'd have to leave it unless you were told something about these values. And then maybe you could evaluate it, but maybe not. Otherwise, I mean, the same kind of idea holds true if you're talking about sine of x, if you're talking about x to the cubed, 
you have to be careful what you evaluate if you don't know what's in it. If we have numbers, great, it's simple, but otherwise we have to be very careful evaluating these absolute values. And later on we'll look at how to evaluate one of these when it's equal to something. So, to solve the possible values of our variables. Otherwise, I will see you later.